This morning we're going to talk a little bit about the Broadway Youth Group. We're going to talk about our children, and we're going to talk about how much we love our children, how much God loves our children. And we're going to recap for the first portion of our summer as far as the teenagers are concerned. The Broadway Youth Group is about and has always been about training leaders, uh, training leaders in our church so that we can be the church of today and a strong church of tomorrow. We know that our purpose is to love God and to love others. That's what Christ tells us to do. And one of my mottos when I try to instill in our teenagers is we want our teenagers to get to heaven and take as many people with us as possible. And that really should be all of our mottos. We start with the two commandments here, the greatest command and the great commission. Jesus tells us that... Um, our job is to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. For this is the first and the greatest of all the commandments that we've been given. And the second is like it, to love our neighbor as ourself. He says, for all of the law and the prophets rest on these two commands. You take everything that's written in the Old Testament, and it can be hung on these two commands. To love God and to love our neighbor. And then he tells us in the Great Commission... He says, all authority has been given to me. Therefore, he says, go and make disciples. Well, how do we do that? He continues and he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. So our job is to make disciples of all nations, of all people. And if we take the, these three main areas that we have underlined right here, we can put those into three categories. Our job is to love God, to worship Him. It's to love the church, love our neighbors. And that's, we do that through ministries. And to love the world, go and make disciples. It's our job to evangelize to the world, to people, people outside of the church. And we do that in many different ways. Um, our evangelistic Efforts are usually very social by nature. Um, go play paintball, go to the clay pits, go to Six Flags, go to Holiday World. And once we get teenagers to enc encourage our teenagers to invite their friends and they can feel comfortable around the church, around the youth group, around the youth minister, then we can feel comfortable inviting them to come to church, setting up a Bible study with them. And then at that point, we bring them into the church. Christ adds them to the church. And then we love our neighbor. We bring them into an opportunity, give them an opportunity to, to minister to others. And we've got teenagers with all different talents. <clears throat> we've got teenagers that, have, that are great singers. Teenagers that, that know the Bible very, very well. Teenagers that are very outgoing. Teenagers that have got uh, things that they love to do. Things that are adventurous to them. Things that make them laugh. And we encourage our teenagers to tap into those things that God has given them and to develop a, a ministry surrounding those. We've had teenagers in the past that have loved to play paintball. So we have them do a paintball ministry. They invite their, their friends from, from, from school to come and play paintball. We, we have a prayer with them before and after. And then that invites them, that allows them to, to feel more comfortable with fellow members of the youth group and bringing them in. Uh, we've got teenagers that have loved to sing. And so we've had singing ministries. We've had a card ministry. We've had all types of ministries that our teenagers have developed on their own that you wouldn't necessarily think of as being ministries within the church. But we encourage them to tap into the talents that God has given them. And then they are given an opportunity to worship God. When we bring those fellow teenagers into the, the church, give them opportunities to love God and to worship Him. Now, and so therefore our purpose in the youth ministry exists to love God, to love the church, and to love the world. And that's what we are about. And if you look at the events that we do throughout the course of the year, all of our events will fit into one of these three categories. Or sometimes they fill multiple categories. If, you'll open up, if you open up the, the, the new life and look at the youth, youth section, you'll see at the bottom of each of the events, they... They attempt to accomplish one of these three goals. We don't just have fun just to have fun. There's a reason. There's a purpose behind that. We don't just go to Life Group. We don't just have a Devo. We don't just go to Uplift. We have a purpose in those. We don't just go to worship. 
We don't just worship God. We have a reason for doing all of the things that we do. And if they're done correctly and they're done within the confines of these two uh, verses of Scripture, then we are accomplishing what we believe Christ has set us to accomplish. You'll remember back in the fall of last year, we brought to you a challenge. Western Kentucky Youth Camp needs your help. Now, Western Kentucky Youth Camp was started a little over 50 years ago. Uh, Floyd and Francis Beard donated the ground on which Western Kentucky Youth Camp now sits. And I'm not sure that Francis or Floyd would have ever imagined youth camp to be what it is today. Uh, Francis had an opportunity with a couple of other of her friends to come up to church camp with us this summer and see the, the things that we've done and have been able to accomplish. And you could see the joy in her face because of the things that church camp has been able to do and the teenagers that have gone through church camp. We're looking at about 1,500 kids a year just during the summer that go through church camp. And that is affecting them positively for the Lord, and that's what we are about. This is a picture, and I'm not sure exactly which cabin this is, but I think it might be the the old cafeteria. Probably taken back in the 60s or 70s, this picture was of a bunch of guys getting together on their weekends and putting together cabins so that our teenagers and our children will have a place to go and learn about God during the summer. And we praise them for that. Fast forward several decades, and we've got teenagers. This was a picture that was taken a few years back at a work camp that we had an entire week of just working at at youth camp trying to make it Uh, bring it up to code in a couple of areas and develop it and and making it a little bit nicer and buttoning up some things so that church camp could begin that particular summer. So the faces that have worked there have changed, but the goal is still the same. This is the the, uh, adult female's cabin. And we, we came to you in the fall and we said we have a goal to expand the, the adult female cabin. Now, an original donation was given at $10,000. We challenged the Broadway Church to donate an additional $10,000, and you did. And you gave more than $10,000. Lone Oak Church of Christ also gave over $10,000. And together with the Farmington and the Fossendale Church, they gave right at $10,000. So a total of $40,000 was donated to expand and remodel this one cabin. And I know several of you have had an opportunity to see it. Some of you have actually had an opportunity to stay in it. You're very lucky uh, because the rest of us didn't have an opportunity to do that. But I'm going to you've been asking about some pictures. So here we go. This is the I'm going to kind of do just a before and after run through these pretty quickly. Everything on the right side is brand new. We moved the front door. We added some windows. There's just another Of the old pictures, everything there on the right side is new. We've got new air conditioner units. Those also double as heaters. Um, This is the the back side of it. Let me me back up. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. If you will see on this picture right here, this old portion was supported by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 piers underneath it. And we went in and we added, we doubled the amount of support. We added a center beam underneath it to sure up the old portion. And we also added these big concrete columns to support the new portion. I'm just going to kind of run through these real quick. There's a nice big propane tank that uh, services the on-demand water. Got a brand new, uh, three brand new decks on the back. The deck on the back is a 12 by 14 deck with uh, bench seating so that our ladies can sit around and we can hold Bible studies. We can do our classrooms there. We ha- hold retreats there uh, in the off season, in the fall and in the spring. There's the old nurse's entrance. There's the new er- nurse's entrance. You'll notice that there is a, a ramp that will take you up into the nurse's area, whereas there was uh, an old pallet there. It was kind of crazy to think that we were we could do all of that with with what we had this is the living quarters for the old nurse for the, and the nurse the old living uh, <laughs> sorry Paula I didn't mean to say that out loud but I was I was uh, anyway the old um, man can't believe y'all did that I wasn't supposed to tell funny jokes till later anyway um, where the the nurses would stay 
you could see that there's basically just one bed. And I, I don't think the nurses actually ever slept there. I think that was mainly for kids who may be sick and needed a place to stay. Well, this is what they have now. It's all hickory flooring and poplar on the walls and on the ceilings. And it now has room to sleep four adults with uh, air conditioner and heater. This right here was the old uh, bathroom facility. Saw a sink there on the left. There was a sink on the right with no drawers there in the cabinets and a commode. Now this is what they've got. Nice tile in there. Uh, it is all handicap accessible. And so um, we've actually had our first handicapped person come to a week of camp this past summer. We had a counselor young man that was there all week, and he used this facilities, um, these facilities here. A handicapped shower, very, very nice. This is where the, um, the adult counselors, the adult staff, the uh, kitchen staff would stay. There were six bunks here and two there, so a total of eight. And this is what they have now. This is the brand new open area. Four ladies can sleep here with a nice little kitchen area there with a full uh, refrigerator, freezer. This is where the kitchen staff would sleep. There's room for six. Uh, it is sectioned off completely by itself because we know that kitchen staff usually keep a little different hours than the rest of camp, get up a little earlier, go to bed a little early. So we wanted them to be uh, able to, to shut themselves back and, and to be able to have their own schedule if need be. This is the sleeping quarters for the rest of the adults, females. We can sleep eight in this one room, and that's all the other cabin would sleep, was just eight. You can see it's much nicer. This is the old um, bathroom facilities. One commode and the shower was put together basically with screws and a little bit of silicone. This is the old um, sink, and there's a little closet there for the water heater. This is what they have now. They've got two showers. They're on, on opposite sides of the building. I've got a double vanity sink and two commodes as well. So not only did we increase capacity from 8 to 22, we also gave them two extra showers, commodes, and uh, sinks. And, of course, it's all much, much nicer than it was before. So this is what we did at, in the fall of last year, in the spring of this year, getting ready for church camp. And the ladies that slept there felt like they were, they were jealous. Uh, they, were, they, they felt very guilty uh, for being able to stay there. And we said, look, guys, that's what this is for. Y'all have The ladies at church camp have blessed us for years, and we wanted to do the same for you. So that's what we did for them. And, and this is also going to be open for retreats all throughout the course of the year. Our first main event that we did as a youth group was our Nashville work camp. Now, we took the theme of one, a popular TV show uh, today. It's called The Walking Dead. And I'll be honest with you, it wasn't my favorite theme, nor is it my favorite T-shirt. Uh, it went directly into my work T-shirt pile. But at any rate, the kids loved it. And the theme was out of Romans chapter 6, verse 11. And it, it talks about us being dead to the world but alive in Christ. And these are some before and after pictures of the houses that we painted. We, we worked on nine houses total. Um, there's one of our after shots with some teenagers. We worked on this house. We painted their front porch. And I think we painted some trim, maybe their shutters. This was another house, kind of a faded blue. We went back with a nice bright blue, and there's some more of our teenagers, the crew that worked at that house. Just some more before and after pictures. This was one of three houses that I had the opportunity to work on. This year was kind of an odd situation. Three houses, literally two of them were right next door to each other, and one was right across the street. So we were able to share materials. The homeowner to this house, so I'll show you a picture of them a little later, very, very nice uh, family. We went uh, from kind of a yellowish color to a nice dark gray and repainted their shutters for them. Very, very happy that we were able to do all this. And again, what we do for work camp, all the work we do is completely for free. We get donations from uh, facilities, from, from paint stores, and... All of our food is donated. We do charge the teenagers, and that goes into, like, T-shirts and some of our supplies. This was another house that we painted. Again, this one was right across the street from that first one. It was kind of a seafoam 
green. This was the house, one of the, the house that I was mainly in charge of. You can see the difference in the two. In the two, these are the homeowners. Um, elderly lady, I believe it was her daughter, and then maybe a son or a grandson that lived there with them also. There's a, the, the back of the house and another picture, the, the after shot. This was a large, obviously, uh, big ladders on that one. We put uh, mainly just adults on the big ladders. Now, this house, love this house. This was a house, um, it was old, it was dilapidated, a lot of rotten wood on it. It really, really needed uh, a lot of, of, of paint and several coats. And let me tell you this in advance, we don't pick the colors. We let the homeowners pick the colors. And sometimes that's, that's more times than not, that's really okay. Sometimes it's, it's a little crazy. And there you go. Yeah. But hey, that's okay because it really made a difference. It was really a nice coat of paint and it really improved the house. This was uh, the side of it. And after a couple of days of trimming, that's what it ended up looking like. A couple of our kids there. There on the left, I think, if... if if my memory serves me correctly, there's DJ. Uh, that is actually Samantha Seifert. She was down there for the summer working with uh, Allison and some of the Snellville kids and a couple of Lone Oak kids there. Another after picture there. This was a nice big side that, that I was fortunate enough to be on. <clears throat> I was actually on one of the houses taking a picture of this house here. And I said, hey, guys, turn around. And then there's Perry on the side there. He says, hey, hold on a minute. Let me climb this ladder and act like I'm doing something. So we got a picture of Perry in there as well. This was Michael Ellen Walden, and she was with us working very hard. This next picture is Caroline Miners working, working really hard. The lady there on the right is Abby Bell, um, not Bell anymore, but she was um, and uh, one of the uh, Georgia girls uh, from Snellville came up as well. This is the crew of, of all three of those houses together taking a picture, and there is the homeowner, and her husband is there in the back. They were a phenomenal, phenomenal couple. Um, she ran a catering business out of her house, and she put out this great big spread for us for lunch one day, and her husband, I don't know, I can't remember all the details, but he had an accident a few years back and was in recovery. He worked for um, an insurance company, and he had really been suffering from depression. And he said that because of our efforts and our love for him and his community that week, he kind of got back on the horse again and started to rekindle some of the connections that he had. And he said that after we, were, we left, he was going to take advantage of this momentum and carry him back into the workforce and get his insurance business back in, in line. So praise God for that. And that's really what we are doing this for. We have a banquet on Thursday, and we invite all the homeowners. He and his wife were there, so they got to experience uh, worship with us, and we fed them a nice meal also. This is a picture of the entire crew uh, of, of all of the five churches that were there. And we've got some from Nashville, obviously two from Paducah. Lone Oak was there. And we had one from, I think, Cookville, Tennessee, and two from Atlanta. One from Snellville and one from Americus, which is actually a bit south of Atlanta. And again, our, our, our passage of Scripture that we went by was uh, Romans chapter 6, verses 8 through 11. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died a sin once and for all. But, is, but the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God through Christ Jesus. Our, our goal was to consider ourselves dead to the world but alive in Christ. Therefore, we are walking dead in this world. And our main, main lessons dealt with, uh, with the walking dead and our spiritual walk and talking about what kind of virus do we have. What kind of viruses do we have? What kind of sin do we have that, that, that entangles us? We need to be able to identify our temptations and our sins in our lives. And as James says, anyone then who knows the good he ought to do and does not do it, he sins. So by that, we're looking at our own temptations and we're trying to identify our sins. The dead tries to kill the living. If we, um, 
The walking dead try to kill and eat everything that's alive. And so does Satan. We talked about a spiritual battle earlier this morning. We are in a spiritual battle. Satan tries to take us down every day. So we must fight the lies of the fo- and, and his followers. It says that the tempter, the devil, came to Jesus and tempted him three times. We know that Satan is a tempter. John 8, 44 says, If you belong to your father, the devil, and, he, and you, will, you want to carry out the father's deeds, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. He is a liar. He is the father of all lies. So we need to take that into consideration when we are living our life. He tries to kill us, and we are certainly in a spiritual war. Our souls and the souls of our children are in jeopardy and are in the hang in the balance. We need to look for ways to be a survivor, a safe place. We know that the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, and we need to avoid that. We need to learn how to see the dead coming. Um, We need to be uh, careful to look for the sin that so easily ensnares us and entangles us. We need to find um, the necessities for life. The Bible says, Jesus says in Matthew 6, to seek first his kingdom and all these things will be given to us as well. Looking for ways to be a survivor. We need to develop a dead versus the living philosophy. The show talks about the living dead and how to evaluate each situation and each person. We need to have the right questions to ask in certain situations. Is this situation going to help me or hinder me? Is it going to take me closer to God or further away? Is this person, this relationship going to help me get to heaven or help take me further away from heaven? As a Christian, we need a a solid philosophy. We need to have good judgment. Proverbs uh, 9 says that the guests of folly... He says, but little do they know that the dead are already there and her guests are in the depths of their grave. The walking dead, they don't even know that they are dead. The walking dead are all around us, but we need to be, as Christians, alive in Christ. So that's kind of what we talked about in in our work camp. The next event we did was Uplift. And this is a week-long Bible camp. It takes place on on the campus of Harding University. We do Bible classes, we do group encounters, we do a small groups, we do a session about an hour and a half of worship every night. And just to kind of go through some of the kids that were there, there's Alexandra. And we've got Ashley Brandon there on the left, and we've got Naima Brown there on the right. There's, I'm not sure who that girl was in the middle, just a friend they picked up, I guess. Uh, Destiny Freeman, uh, she's a member down at 9th Street. We've got DJ, and we've got Derek Miller there on the right, buddy of DJ's. We've got Elizabeth Price there in the middle. She was one of our adults, one of our counselors. We've got Hunter Rommelman and some cute girl he picked up. Uh, Jacob Pegram was with us. Lillian Wisner doing some little toss of the game that they had. Rayanna Brown, Reed Harriman, and Caroline. The face painting, we were doing an Olympics theme that night, and they kind of dressed up as, as different mem- members of different nations. We've got Ryan Skibinski and Connor Brooking. We've got Turner Eisenberg, Tyler Scarborough, and Grant Hammonds. And those are all of our teenagers. This is kind of a group shot the last day that we were there. And the point of, of Uplift was uh, you are here. It's talking about a, um, a GPS type of deal. And the first day we talked about your identity, knowing where you are spiritually so that you can grow to maximize your potential. Talking about God, we need God to teach us. We want to understand His words. We want Him to direct us in all of our ways. We take a look at this picture. If this was our spiritual walk, our spiritual climb, where do we fit? Where would you be individually on this tree? And each person, whether they want to admit it or not, can fit really well in this, in this picture. Whether they're on the side, whether they're climbing really hard, whether they're struggling like this little girl hanging on for dear life. You know, each of us can find that we are located somewhere spiritually on this tree. We need to find our destination. Ultimately, our destination needs to be with God. And we talk about how faith, through faith, Abraham did all these things. He, he, he got up and he left and he, and he went with God, not knowing really where he was going. Even though uh, Sarah was past age, even though God said to him that I will... Um, you're, through your offspring, he still was willing to sacrifice his son. 
And that's what we need to do. We need to, by faith, do like Moses did and be willing to follow God. We need to be able to choose a path knowing that ultimately our path is a spiritual path to God. And we need to be willing, on the second day we talked about starting our route, talking about a GPS, again, the GPS theme, make sure that we're ready to travel. And flip through these, we just, again, we talk about the different things that we need to do spiritually to be ready to travel with God. Um, reading His Bible, studying His, His Word, prayer, all these things are important. Preparing for spiritual challenges. We need to recognize that Satan is here to tempt us. And just like the Israelites, um, they wanted to do what God wanted them to do. Um, they especially wanted to make it to the promised land. But they needed to be prepared for the challenges that, that uh, were going to be ahead of them. And are we prepared for our own challenges? We need to know what God expects of us. God expects us to follow him no matter what. And we know that the, the Israelites were, were led by a, a pillar of, of a cloud and a pillar of fire. And we need to be willing to take action. James says, don't just be hearers, of what he, uh, but be doers as well. On the third day, we talked about recalculating. Um, there are two reasons why we might need to recalculate decisions we make and decisions that are out of our control. We, and the prodigal son made a bunch of decisions on his own that took him away from his father. And we oftentimes do the same thing. We go through a maze in our life. If this, this picture represents our life, as we try to solve this, this maze, we are having to redirect every, every day because of decisions that we make. Things that are out of our control. We know that Joseph had a lot of things that faced him that were out of his control. You know, he was beat up and he was thrown into a pit. He was uh, sold into slavery. Uh, he was accused falsely of mistreating Potiphar's wife. And we know that there was a natural disaster he had to deal with through the famine. And all these things uh, that we need to be ready to be able to recalculate our lives. Humility into our attitude like Christ. Being willing to forgive as God forgave us and to seek God first. And all these things will be added to us as well. The last day of uplift, we talked about our final destination in heaven is our, ultimately our final destination. And we need to arrive, but even when we arrive, we're not finished yet. The Bible talks about living for Christ, living by faith, continuously living until we die. There's no retirement, as Gary Enloe likes to say. There's no retirement from being a Christian. The kingdom, um, kingdom living changes everything that we do. Okay, we get a different direction. We are a new creation. And that we need to change our perspective in everything that we do as, as a new creation in Christ. And then the third point of this was to go, God goes with us. We know that everything that we do, God is with us. We change our perspective. We change our priorities. And we need to be ingrained in being with, with Christ. We had a class on Wednesday night about priorities. Ryan, uh, Ray Skabinski came up to me and said, you know, as a first responder, we are trained to uh, go on a scene. And through all of the chaos, we are trained to make decisions based upon priority. And that's what we do. Y'all might recognize these two uh, logos here, FedEx and Baskin Robbins. FedEx wants you to know that through the arrow, they are always on the go. They are always in motion. And, of course, Baskin-Robbins, 31 flavors. Those are logos that if we see them, we, those should be ingrained in us. And the last thing that we did was our um, work, um, West Craig Youth Camp. Our theme this year was Written in Stone. This is the group from Broadway. We had right at 30 people there our, this summer. And we talked about the, uh, the Ten Commandments. And I won't won't go through each of those, but just to say that the first of the commandments is that have no other God before me. The second is that not to make any idols. And we talked about uh, Exodus chapter 32 where they created an idol for them. Third commandment is not to misuse the Lord's name. I'm talking about uh, swearing falsely. Just make your yes, yes, and your no, no. Uh, your, how you treat your time and your parents, remembering the Sabbath day and keeping it holy. We talked about how the, the Saturday was the Sabbath, but our holy day is Sunday. We talked about honoring your father and your mother and how all of your relationships and all that you do start at home. 
The sixth commandment, do not murder. It's about respecting ourselves and respecting others. The seventh commandment, do not commit adultery. We talked about the difference between fornication and adultery. That was a little touchy for the young kids, but we we dealt with it anyway. And we talked about um, the difference between uh, the, 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 the sanctity of sex through marriage and the, the, what it, it does and to our relationships in our life when it's taken um, outside of marriage. And the Eighth Commandment, Thou shalt not steal. We talked, obviously, about stealing and, and honoring our debts and paying people. Um, do not give false testimony. And the last one, um, do not covet and we talked about what that means about not uh, about being content in all that we do. And ultimately, that the God tells us that we are to love God and love Him more than anything. And, the, and we summed up the summer with the, with several uh, fun activities. Maggie's jungle golf. There's a nice picture of Lily. And remember, if you're taking the picture, always uh, smile if you're being taken because you never know what's going to happen. We played a round of kickball with, with Lone Oak. Again, these are very evangelistic by nature. We went and played paintball again with the Lone Oak group. This is why you sign a waiver. I don't know if y'all pick up if she got shot right between the eyes there. Okay, safety first. Uh, this is a clay pits, and you might think, what a ridiculous event. You're exactly right. It is a ridiculous event, but it is awesome. And we just go and have a lot of fun and get really dirty. This was our trip to Holiday World. And the last one is our trip. Uh, We took a trip, uh, lock in down to Nashville and played laser tag. Now, guys, I know I threw a lot at you and I apologize, but I wanted to give you an opportunity to see what our summer looked like. At the Broadway Church of Christ, we love our kids. And we want you to know that we love our kids. It is important for us at the Broadway Church of Christ to love our kids and to train them properly. And we want you to know that God loves our kids as well. 